a giant and a horsepower monster on their way across the sea. One of the, the, the wires of the connection could break. Defying all dangers. It's really dangerous to work here, especially when the weather is moving. I mean, the vessel is moving all the time. The largest tugboat pulling the largest drilling ship. A gigantic transport halfway around the world. The West Bolster, the largest semi-submersible drilling vessel in the world. 122 meters long, weighing 31,000 tons, as heavy as 55 Airbus A380s. With a maximum drilling depth of 12 kilometers, it could drill through Mount Everest one and a half times. And at its highest point, it measures 122 meters. This drilling ship has just come off the production line and has to go halfway around the world. From the shipyard in South Korea to Tenerife. Oscar Wicklund is responsible for making sure everything works on the West Bolster. It's really important that everything of our equipment uh, we have on decks around the rig, which are loose, is secured like this. Because during the, the transit, we uh, do expect and can expect to have uh, some movements, some bad weather, strong winds, and uh, we need to be prepared for that. There's only one thing that can transport this gigantic drilling ship, the most powerful tugboat in the world, the ALP Striker, 89 meters long, 21 meters wide, and a top speed of 35 kilometers per hour. Thanks to its 24,000 horsepower engine, it has a pulling power of 309 tons. of this horsepower monster is Kees Pronk. It's a huge uh, drilling rig. Uh, according to the papers, it's uh, one of the biggest drilling, drilling rigs in the world. So it's also very nice that the, uh, the biggest uh, ocean-going tug will tow the uh, biggest drilling rig. Of course, it's a challenge. Uh, it's, it's a trip halfway around the world. Uh, we, we can expect some, some bad weather, of course, during the voyage. But why this risky transport? Normally, semi-submersible transport ships carry such heavy loads as oil platforms. But the West Bolster has a very special drive system which makes normal transport impossible. A total of eight thrusters on the bottom of the ship provide stability and move it from one location to the next. Transportation by a semi-submersible would destroy the thrusters. Now it's time to weigh anchor on the West Bolster. Each of them weighs 18 tons. That's why this is a job for cranes. In the meantime, the star of the mission is arriving at the shipping company, the ALP Striker. The next morning, now, the ALP Striker has to moor up with the huge drilling ship, a connection which is to last for three months. The tugboat then pulls 31,000 tons behind it. This only works thanks to an ingenious system. First, the crew attaches a steel cable in combination with massive chains to the floats. The so-called delta plate connects these two cables with the 8 cm thick towing cable of the ALP Striker. This triangular construction distributes the tensile forces evenly. This makes the connection more durable and improves maneuverability. 
Two emergency ropes also ensure that the West Bolster can re-establish the connection should it break off in a storm. So much for the theory. Now, over to the practical part. A chain weighs up to four tons and the crew has to position everything precisely. No easy task. Captain Keyes is getting a little nervous. Guys, above the pin you have a vertical bar, that's for hammering. Use the vertical bar on top of it for hammering. There is always a small chance that something could happen, like uh, one of the, the, the wires of the connection could break. Now the most important moment. The crew connects all the chains to the connector, the delta plate. It will constantly be underwater during transport and therefore cannot be monitored along the way. The crucial moment. Tension is applied to the chains. Will the construction hold? Everything is fine. The transport journey halfway round the world can begin. The ALP striker will now pull a weight of 31,000 tons behind it for three months thanks only to its gigantic pulling power. The drilling ship floats up to 13 meters below the water surface. This means an enormous resistance for the tug. The ALP striker must therefore always drive at full throttle. To avoid any malfunctions, a mechanic checks the engine room every four hours. He pays special attention to the four 6,100 horsepower engines that drive the ship and the turbine shafts. They run through the entire ship. After half an hour, the tour of inspection is over. So round is done, all okay. About half of the trip transporting this giant has been completed. That means a big stop ashore to refuel and replenish supplies. During the journey, the transport cable is completely extended over a length of two kilometers. Due to its heavy weight, it hangs up to 120 meters below the surface. If the water becomes shallower, the chain can drag on the ground and break or tear. So if it's heading towards the coast, the crew has to shorten the length of the chain considerably. Sounds simple, but the danger for the crew is enormous because a 10 centimeter thick rubber cover protects the cable from damage. The crew has to loosen it in order to shorten the cable. Uh, Spiker be stuck. Where's the bridge deck already? Yeah, we're ready now. Yeah, okay, yeah, you can uh, you can start removing the uh, clamps for the fixed protectors. Uh, Roger that, start removing the clamps. During the entire process, the cable is under extreme tension. It's really dangerous to work here, especially when the weather is moving. I mean, the vessel is moving all the time, so you have to be very careful as, and also uh, on the wire. You have to be very care careful on it and you have to watch each other. A single wave could cause the cable to swing and hit a crew member, with disastrous consequences. Yeah, 
Okay, okay, you can please say uh, heave up, heave up the wire. The towing cable is attached to a huge winch. It can wind up to 13 meters per minute, and so bring the West Bolster closer to the ALP striker, meter by meter. Meanwhile, the transport is approaching the coast of Namibia, which they've reached on schedule after a month at sea. Uh, nice to see some uh, land again after four weeks. At the port of Walvis Bay in Namibia, it's time to refuel and stock up on supplies. During that time, the West Bolster is not connected to the ALP striker, but she stays in her designated position. This is because a radar system always checks the surroundings, the wind and the wave strength. Using this data, the system automatically adjusts the thrusters and their position. This keeps the drilling vessel in position without an anchor, with an accuracy of half a meter, even in waves of up to five meters high. After less than 24 hours in Namibia, the ALP striker weighs anchor again. The last stage of the trip is about to begin. From Walvis Bay in Namibia, along the African coast, to Santa Cruz on Tenerife. And everything goes according to plan. Without any further incidents, the ALP striker and the West Bolster reach the port of Tenerife. The crew has thus covered a total of 25,204 kilometers across three oceans. Now all they have to do is release the connecting cable. For the disconnection operations, everything looks good. I don't expect any big problems. The, the weather is perfect, not much wind, no much, uh, not much sea. And after three hours, it's done. Uh, Bolsta, striker. Striker, Bolsta, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, after three months, uh, that's uh, finished. Uh, beautiful, I uh, appreciate all the cooperation, all the help, it was done in full professional way. Uh, everything was safely done, uh, thank you. Yeah, also same from our side, uh, happy to uh, bring you over here, and uh, yeah, let's hope till next time. The strongest tugboat in the world has thus safely delivered the world's largest semi-submersible drilling vessel to its place of operation.